Baylor men's basketball could not hit a shot, and they lose to Texas, 76-71. This is Locked on Baylor. You are Locked on Baylor, your daily podcast on the Baylor Bears, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Is this your king? Is this your king? Drake Toll, Cameron Stewart, Locked on Baylor, inside the Bears, whatever. Um, Look. It, it's what the last few games have been. It's volume shooting. It is let's throw it at the basket, namely 20 seconds to go. Three-point game, Keontae George just heaves it um, for no reason whatsoever, by the way. We'll just throw that, that one out there. And <coughs> again, sometimes I question, what is Flo Thamba? Um, and maybe a better question is why? And Caleb Lohner could probably ask the same thing. The bench had six points. Texas bench had 30. God, it's just, man. it's not good. Um, the offense looks sporadic a lot. Like, as, this team's won six straight. You've got to be a good team to do that, sure. But they're kind of just putting the ball up toward the basket. All right, your turn. Gosh, I got to talk. Yeah, the day after you said Dude. this team is unapologetically elite. If you had a microphone in this house tonight, the Baptist would never look at me the same way. Never. <laughs> I swear, man. Did you do some of that TAC? It would have been rated it would have been rated PG in 1973, but it was vulgar. I was so angry watching this game. For a couple of reasons, Drake. Some yeah, you've already yeah, touched yeah. on. Some you've already touched on. I don't know what this team is offensively. Like, I do, mm -hmm. but I don't really like yeah. it. Um, and I say, yeah. like, what was different is, like, they have shot creators. Yeah. Like, I talked about it on, on Saturday. Like, LJ Cryer's development as a shot creator this last month has been so awesome to watch. We've seen what Flagler can do, mostly last year, to be quite fair. Um, and we've seen what Keontae George can do in terms of off the dribble. And yet, they can't get any decent looks tonight. I mean, it is just 10 seconds into the shot clock, ISO, three-pointer, contested. Like, can and we create some looks? Can we create some looks? Or how about, Drake, that. when we do, when, I mean... <laughs> I said on Saturday against Arkansas, there are some shots that I just couldn't understand how they didn't go in the net because they were just like halfway down and out. Tonight, I was saying the same thing, but it's because there's guys who are a couple inches taller than their defender and they're inches away from the basket. <laughs> or there's no one ahead of them and it's just them in the basket and the ball does not go in the basket. Yeah. I just, I, I oh, I've never seen. I mean, that's going to be the first thing out of Scott's mouth, right? Like, we missed every layup we took tonight. Yeah. Like, I, the bench points, obviously, damning. But if you hit half your layups, you win that game. I, mm -hmm. And Texas, oh, for sure. Frank Fischilla said it all night, uh, Texas did defend the guards well. I mean, they're like a average defensive team, which makes them yeah. way below average in the Big 12. Ahead of Baylor, by the way. Um but like it was there for the taking and they got some good looks early on. I thought, man, they're getting some good looks. They weren't hitting layups, of course, but I was like, they're getting some good looks at the basket here. Just like Saturday tonight, they're going to fall. And then they didn't fall. And then they didn't get good looks. And uh, it is concerning. I mean, it's one, it's one thing to kind of live and die by the three. It's quite another to like, like we say that hyperbolically, right? Um, but it's quite another to live that and just only be able to score when you hit a three. Uh, it's frustrating, man. It's frustrating. And I set the bar pretty low for Caleb Lohner and, uh, he yeah. somehow does not hit it, man. He mm -hmm. does not, does not hit it. And even when it's not really his fault, he makes it like so spectacularly bad that it looks like his fault. And uh, you missed Langston Love tonight. You did. 
which I didn't I think I'd be saying yeah. two, three weeks ago. Not why you lost. That was the only difference in the game. Right. It wasn't the you only difference him. in the game, but you missed it. Um, and look, they were tired. They were tired, man. I get it. <clears throat> they played a physical game on Saturday. So did Texas. Texas looked tired too. Yeah. And, you know, that wouldn't um, that wouldn't bug me so much as, I don't know if you've seen this, Drake. It's this new thing with the NCAA tournament. Do you know how they do the schedule? Uh, 68 of teams. So, so you play, you start on like a Thursday or a Friday, okay? Oh, And, and if you, you win, yeah. you play in the next game. And then you play, if you played on Thursday, you'll play on Saturday. If you play on Friday, you play on Sunday. So if you're keeping score at home, that's a two-day difference, yeah. one full day. Yeah. Baylor played on Saturday. Physical game, one full day off. They played on Monday. They were still tired. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, don't love that, Drake. Because to win a national championship, you got to win six games in the tournament. Which means you got to do that puppy three times. I I really hope <coughs> Caleb Lohner's post game media first first thing I was about, like <laughs> we're all looking for the guy who did this. We're all <laughs> we're all looking for the reason. Oh, Flo, Flo, oh man, same thing. I hope that the people that I I prodded, I prodded a lot of folks to go just watch Flo Thamba. Uh, when you do, there are a lot of possessions where you, it's funny. Like the offense is either A, ISO, or B. Flo Thamba is so non offense. Like that's the, I, I don't even want to, I don't want to put a grammatically correct sentence together because it doesn't deserve it. He is so <laughs> not offense that they say, Flo, just stand at the top of the key. They're going to give you the basketball. You give it right back. Do not dribble. Do not move. Because every time he dribbles, it's it's insane. That one time where they just hand him the basketball and he immediately <laughs> falls down and they strip the ball away, get like jump ball or something, and then Flo's like, what? What? No. No. That can't be your offense. Someone go post up. Someone go play in the paint. Also, here, here are these numbers. Here are the numbers that really Can I, Before you get into the numbers, are you going to do sure. Flo Thamba numbers? Because oh, I, I don't no. think there are many up there. Because I want to do a point on Flo Thumba real quick. Because right, right. you five, know, and I, this five points, in the last... six rebounds for your starting center. Uh, fouls out of the game. Twenty five <laughs> only plays twenty five minutes. By the way, uh, because he was in four. foul trouble eight minutes into the game. One for four yeah. shooting. Your your Flo Thumba. So I uh, people know I'm a huge Flo Thumba defender. Right? Yeah, you I are. Defend the Flo Thumba wall pretty much. Yes. And overarchingly, in general, I will still. I, I can't really defend this game almost yeah. anyone on the team. Um, the last one. But you know what? Flo Thamba is in that class with Ben Simmons and the 2021-22 Texas Tech Red Raiders. And what I mean by that is he would be such a good basketball player if you took the basketball out of the equation. Like if there was no basketball in the game, he would be awesome. He would be For the sure. best player. Number one pick. For sure. Unfortunately, Drake, they do play with the ball still. They have been for a while. Like many a newly pubescent boy, they, they, I'm not going to finish that one. I'm not going to finish that joke. The Baptist already ate me. It's, I'm having a tough night. Uh, Flo Thomas was having a tough night. Keontae George was having a tough night most of the night. Uh, yeah. They were Bears having a tough night. To the point where he was like, you know what? <laughs> I've been playing so poorly. Heat check with the game on the line. I, You what? Hey, your mic came unplugged. While your mic is unplugged, and we still can't hear you because you gotta like reset the settings. Uh while while your audio is out, I will I'll bring up the numbers here. Um Keontae George, five for eighteen. Five for eighteen. LJ Cryer, seven for seventeen. Uh, Adam Flagler, four for twelve. If you are keeping a score at home, you're doing that math. That is forty seven shots taken. That is 16 made field goals from your three best players. The Your mic's back. The yeah. star of the night. Okay, it's volume shooting. Throw it and hope something happens. Um, the star of the evening, Jalen Bridges. 13 points, 6 for 10, 1 for 3 from deep, 7 rebounds. I love Jalen Bridges. Give him yeah, I thought he actually kiss. played pretty well on both ends of the floor tonight. It didn't try to do too much. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, I thought played pretty good defense and look, I mean, I got to give big or some credit, right? They, they did fight. Like I, it, it really sucks that the shots didn't go in and defense, the defense offense just awful. didn't look like it. Yeah. Yeah. They, I mean, they had stretches where it looked like January 5th Baylor 
and Texas guards were just getting to the getting to the rack. Layups, layups, layups. But for yeah. I would say about two thirds of that game, they played pretty well, and they just they hung in there, man. And I didn't feel great about them winning, but they got it down to one. I think like that they they really really hung in there at the night that was not theirs. Um, but I was saying you you were talking about that Keontae heat check. Didn't love it. Didn't love Adam Flagler doing it. The possession before that, sure. uh, and he was actually hot. Um, at least get to the basket and about seven seconds into the shot clock, he had the ISO on the wing and he just took a three instead of maybe trying to take his man on again. And that pretty much sunk the ship as well. So look, I don't want to, I'm, I don't want to back out on my elite thing. I don't want to do it. Cause that, I, that yeah. earned me, that earned me some great Twitter applause. Uh, people, people love me, which, you know, they're I really, split, I, re- by the way. I really care about. Yeah. The Baylor poll, fans were split, split on the elite yeah. question for sure. Which um, is good. But it was just tough to watch that tonight and say that that's a championship contender. And look, I understand it was the it was the quick turnaround. You're playing on the road against the number ten team in the country. Like, let's not take this lightly. And this is the toughest conference in America, and you, and you had it down to one with a minute to go, right? Yeah, I the I really style wanted... of play just wasn't there. And and again, I, maybe I'll back myself into a corner again, but. Uh, like if I saw this tonight, I would say, yeah, that's, that's not a, that's not a team that gets out of the first weekend, but I would also argue to myself that not just Texas, but the rest of the big 12, I don't think you're going to face a team as good as you've been playing in this gauntlet until the second weekend. Mm -hmm. I really don't. You would hope that's not not to take mid majors lightly. Uh, we know there's some tough teams out there that you'll get in the round of 32. I don't think they will, unless it's a big 12 opponent, which is possible, uh, that they'll face a team of quality of even an Oklahoma um, until the Sweet 16. Yeah. Yeah. So or te- maybe that, Texas maybe that, that, take that as my positive note of the night. How about that? Could be Iowa take State. That. We could be Iowa State. Iowa State was up by like 20 and lost by yeah, three in bad. overtime to Tech. They stormed bad. the court. Um, what is face, uh, that team that won, by the way, on Saturday? Yes. At home, <laughs> luckily. Um, I have a pile of, not a pile. I stepped in dog poop. I don't even know who has a dog, but I stepped in dog poop and I didn't realize it. I've been smelling something in my room for a while and I didn't realize what it was until like a minute and a half before we started the show. And I like, like nose in the carpet trying to figure out what's going on and just, oh, my hands in dog poop. Look at the bottom of my shoe. It's there. It is there for sure. Uh, the opposite of stepping in dog poop is going to fanduel.com. There is something about it. It it is fan D U E L America's number one sports book. And it is right now the official betting partner for locked on because they're the number one sports book in America. Uh, if you're new to fan duel, it's even better because right now you go in, you put uh, no sweat first bet Super Bowl 57, get $3,000 back in bonus bet. If your first bet doesn't win download fan duel, I'm going to read this. I'm going to read this exactly like it's written download fan duel. Now, so you can bet Super Bowl 57 with a no sweat first bet. You'll get up to $3,000 back in bonus bets if your first bet doesn't win. That's insane. I really don't know what that means. I'm going to try to figure it out. That's insane. So you guess you don't want your first bet to win? No. $3,000 back in bonus. Okay. So if you spend $3,000, okay, and your bet doesn't hit, you get it back. All right. FanDuel. So put 3000 bucks on something. I don't know. Uh, FanDuel is it's where you bet on everything. Money lines, parlays. FanDuel Sports app. Safe. Easy to use. You get winnings instantly. FanDuel. Locked on right now. 50000 whatever. 3000 FanDuel.com, the official sports book of the NFL. Download the app today. Put in Locked On. See what happens. Uh, Cam, I don't want to backtrack here. That was a lot trying to figure out the whole FanDuel ad read. I was confused. Like, all right, I put five bucks on it. It loses. I get $3,000. That's a deal, man. Head to FanDuel.com. Is that on me or is it the way it was written? Did you, were you confused by that at first a little bit? You do struggle with reading, I think. I I do. I do. Flo Thomas struggles with offense. (laughs) Um, Is this team elite? I'm not going to, like, I, I, part of me was like, okay, are we going to open the show that conversation again? I'm glad we didn't. I'm glad we can get to it a little bit now. Bury the lead. 
Uh, I don't think this changes the fact that I, I'm not like, oh, take that cam. Baylor's not elite. They lost his game. You could, like that that. I'm you could do that. In general, I could. I think yeah. I feel like I could. I I, grounds too. But this is one game. They won six in a row before yeah. this. This is one game still. Um, I think you saw a lot of tonight, last night. You saw a lot of reasons that Baylor should have lost mm -hmm. a portion of the games that they won. They this these are things they have not been doing things yeah. well. They've not been shooting the ball well. They have. They're the worst defensive team in the Big Twelve, by the way. Um. So yeah, this like yeah they lost this game. They're on the road at UT, a good team in the Big Twelve. Uh, this is just the way they've been playing. It's gonna win you yeah. some games. It's it's gonna lose you games in the tournament for sure. Yeah, um, you probably just one game in the tournament um, that they'll lose uh, if I had to bet. But uh, no, I actually agree with that. Where would 100%. if you had to bet? Like, where would you bet that? Where would you bet like, only one loss <laughs> in the tournament? Fanduel.com. Fan win thousands of dollars. Yeah. Put down my pocket change and win just thousands. Anyway, I actually agree with it like wholeheartedly. Uh, it doesn't really change uh, my opinion on the team tonight. Um, yeah. I expected them to play better. I thought they'd come out with some more energy. They didn't. Um, but it's kind of one of those things with the Big 12. You just know that's that's liable to happen any night, right? Um, and especially... With how streaky this team can be, uh, I, I'm not surprised that things like this happen. Uh, I didn't think it was going to be tonight. But again, like you said, top 10 team on the road. We go again on Saturday. We go again. I mean, you just hopefully, hopefully actually learn something from this. You know, you, coaches always say you don't win much when you play like doo-doo and win, but you learn when you lose. And uh, I just hope to see some more dimensions to this offense going forward. But um, Cam, they haven't been playing like doo doo and winning. Someone is saying out there into the void. Um, here are I mean, they numbers. didn't play well on Saturday. <laughs> Jackson Posey, here are some numbers to back it up. We've been saying it. Here are the numbers. Uh, the Bears came into the Oklahoma game shooting 46% from the field. In their last four games, they have shot a average of 36%. That is a 10% difference. And they've won three of those games. They've so won three of those games. Is it a cold streak? Or have teams figured out how to guard them? By the way, Kansas is in that. Kansas is in that three yeah. wins. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Baylor's now twelve and two against top ten teams in the last fourteen games. Oh, that's, that's, that's the arrow to the heart. That is the worst part of this whole deal. Can I just? I mean, I like this team. I do. Do I love it? Oh, no, what? Uh, not terrifically love it. Mm -mm. Um, it's nowhere near like felt better. Like, look, if, if you're, if my, if where I'm putting this team is based on a national championship team, which I feel oh, like I, I do that a lot. You know, I do that. I'm, I'm getting into like, do. I get it. I get it. How do you not? Like that was a national, like, the, we now know what a national championship looks like. And you can look at this team and be like, Oh good. I can enjoy them, but I, eh, no, I'm not going to win at all. Yeah. I, I probably had like if we took the last year's team going into the tournament versus this year's team where we are right now, I would have liked last year's team. I thought that could have legitimately been a final four team again. Obviously the committee thought so too, as a one seed um, salt in my water. Okay. But uh, I just, I was saying it and, and I don't want to back off it because going into this game, they weren't playing like terrifically terrific as I admitted on the last show, but they were playing well and they were winning and they were trending in the right direction. In yeah. terms oh, yeah. of, I th I thought that, you know, the shots didn't go in against Arkansas, but they got good looks and they were adding something to their offense. I thought their defense obviously had played a lot better in the switch to the zone and they became a much better rebounding team during the winning streak. Those are the things that we see from national championship teams year in and year out and final four teams year in, year out. They're always top five in, in rebounding, especially offensive rebounding. Kansas was in top five, top six or eight in offensive rebounding last year. Um, they didn't have a great dominant presence in the post, but they played efficiently. They didn't turn the ball over a ton. They, they took smart shots. That's what Baylor was doing in this winning streak. So like the team, if they improve in that department, we'll love the team. Uh, yeah. But like the team, I still think they are in that echelon. And again, it's a, it's a different parody in college basketball this year. I have to stress that. Whereas usually we see sometimes one or two teams that can win it. Like in 2021, sometimes four or five teams that can win it. Like last year, I think there are eight, nine or 10 teams out there right now 
at the end of January that can win the national championship or be in that final four. And I think Baylor is right on the edge, but they are there. Cornell they are I, as well. Yes, of course. Yeah. The big red. Don't uh, sleep on yeah. Iona. They've got a national championship head coach. If your guards are not, if your guards don't shoot literally 34%, if your best three players, yeah, not great. Your best three players shot 34%. That's not a good way to win a game. And they still almost won the game. They almost did. Uh, Scott Drew, tough, man. Gosh, tough. I can only imagine you'll be asked some very hard questions in this press conference. Scott, I just hope you I hope you take them in stride. What do you got for us? Well, another typical Big 12 game. One or two possessions. Credit Texas for uh, uh, making plays down the stretch. And um, I thought uh, they really got off to a good start. Got in transition. And um, uncharacteristic, we've been we've been really uh, efficient in uh, uh, getting high percentage shots, getting back in transition, and uh, dug ourselves a little hole in the beginning of the game. Really proud of the guys' fight, and uh, it's a tough place to play. Um, new facility is amazing. Um, they did a great job with it, um, and. I wish uh, uh, to call a timeout on that uh, 17 second, 18 second that that possession. So that one that that's on me, and I'll be kicking myself for that one. Nah, um, you know, it, the twos. I thought we uh, uh, they did a good job contesting some of them, and then we missed some. That we rushed. I mean, especially early in the game. I mean, we had a couple point blank layups. So, um, we're, we're we're second best offense in the country, and it's not by shooting thirty seven percent. It's not having nine assists. So normally we're an eighteen assist team, and uh, credit Texas's defense for uh, speeding us up and keeping us out of our rhythm. Scott, uh, late in the game, there was a stretch there two or three times you guys got to the basket for layups, but. Th- Followed that up with three pointers. Do you feel like they settled for those threes? When yeah, we, the, when we, the we took were we worked? took some bad threes, and we we don't go to we don't go eight for twenty six on threes if we take good ones. So um, we got we got really good shooters. My job, I got to get them better shots. I get them good shots. They'll make they'll make a higher percentage. I guess the scouting report focused on Jabari Rice. Hmm. Did it? I, I I know my brother recruited him at GCU, and I know he's a heck of a player. So I was a big fan of his. Uh, I know what he's capable of. Um, I mean, he really adds a great dimension to their team. How, how much did the, the trap uh, mess up with y'all's offense, and did y'all expect Zero to be the guy who would be covering Keontae most of the night? Uh, I, th- I thought he did a good job on Keontae. I mean, Keontae started out 0 for 7 or 8, and Allen caused a lot of that. And... Uh, um, I thought uh, uh, we expected them to trap ball screens, and uh, I think we had two 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 dunks layups to begin the game, and we didn't capitalize on them. And normally, if we trap and people dunk on us, we get out of it. So uh, it was unfortunate. Yeah, Scott Texas was really uh, running the offense through Timmy Allen, especially early on. Yeah. Just he's kind of a unique guy. Back to the basket, a lot of mid ranges and take threes. Good passer. What kind of I guess problems does he present for a defense? Seven for ten, eighteen points, four assists, six rebounds. Those problems. So, um, I mean, he's he's a great college player. Uh, he's had a great college career, um, and he's a tough guard. This is for LJ. Uh, you guys have. Been a good scoring team all year. The last four games, y'all shot shot under forty percent. Do, do you feel like you're, are y'all getting the shots? Are y'all moving the ball? Or how, how do you feel about that? Uh, can you repeat that? Yeah. Hmm. Hello. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Last four games, y'all shot below forty percent. Are, are y'all getting the shots you want in general, or how's that going? Um. Like he said, we're not getting the shots we want. We try to get um, good, better, best. Uh, right now, I guess we're taking good shots instead of great shots, and sometimes they're not even good shots. So we just got to do a good job, better job getting into the paint and find each, finding each other. Scott, back here, uh, right here. Uh, it seemed like every time you guys would sort of claw your way back into that game, Texas would respond. Uh, mm-hmm. Is that kind of how you guys felt? I mean, you pulled pretty close there. Uh, and then they 
did the same thing. But that that's a top 10 team. That's a, a Big 12 game. I mean, it's great coaches, great players. Um, nobody's giving – no one's packing up and going home when they get down. So, I mean, especially on the road uh, for us, um, for us you, to win a road game, you got to earn it, and uh, we didn't earn it tonight. And, uh, one more for LJ. Uh, what was so difficult about scoring on that Texas defense? Um, I mean, I feel like they, they're long. They deny the ball, so it's hard to get open on cuts. Um, I mean, they're a hard playing team. It was kind of similar to Arkansas, so um, yeah. LJ, back here too, right here. Uh, you know, coach had mentioned the low number of assists in this game. It was like that in Arkansas as well. Do you think that's credit to what the defense is doing, or is that on on you guys? Um, of course, they did a good job, but at the end of the day, uh, we can control that. Uh, we can't um, let them dictate what we do. We we got to um, go out there and do what we do regardless of what they're doing. So um, that's my take on that. Scott, how big was that 8-0 run Texas had early in the second half? Uh, they pushed it to nine, and it just seemed like you were struggling to get it beyond four, and then you get it beyond two. I know you talked about digging yourselves in a hole. Was that just a case of got close yeah. and just couldn't quite get over the hump? I was more more upset with the first half, to be honest. I thought first half uh, we didn't execute and play like we were capable until the last – eight minutes or so, um, and you can't start out on the road like that. And that was more disappointing. Scott, I know you're focused on your own thing, but do you see any of Rodney Terry in this team? Have you noticed him kind of putting his impact on what he's doing here? Yeah, they got a great staff, and Rodney's uh, got head coaching experience. Everybody knows him in the state, respects him. Um, he's, doing a, he's doing a great job with a great team. So, uh, again, it's the, it's the Big 12. Uh, every game is one or two possession, and and coaches aren't 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 gonna give you games. You got to earn them, and uh, tonight they earned it. Uh, Marcus Carr, you figure if you hold him down like yeah. that, you're probably gonna win, right? Yeah. So that's that's a that's credit to them. I mean, if you can have a player uh, score five and who averages twenty at home uh, and get a win, that that's a credit to their team. And they had guys step up and. Uh, um, we didn't. We didn't step up enough. Back here again. Uh, win streak is gone. What's the mentality for this team heading into the rest of Big Twelve play? Oh, we like winning, so we got to get back to uh, fixing things and uh, improving. But it's it's hard to have long win streaks in this this league. I mean, six of the top fifteen teams. Everybody's an NCAA tournament team. I mean. You can play well and lose games, and if you don't play well, you got no chance. Thank you, guys. Hey, drive safe. Man, that was Scott Drew. They berated him tonight. Oh, man, that first question, man. Scott. How do you bounce back man. from something like this? How do you? What do you fix, Scott? How do you fix it? Mm, they really put it on him. Um, I think they got the four sale signs on on the lawn, which is I thought we, a step too far, but hey. We've done a podcast two days in a row together, which is the first time we've done that in a while, by the way. Throw that out there. Uh, Baylor's yeah. off school tomorrow, so I'm, I went and bought some uh, choice drinks to celebrate that. Also, Bang energy. Yeah. the Big 12 football schedule is released tomorrow. Cannot wait. Sitting around I saw a tweet about that. So we can, you know, we we might pod tomorrow again. I would I gotta I, I mean I want it to be you for a reaction to the Big Twelve schedule because it's gonna be awesome, but it doesn't have to be. We haven't talked about that yet. We can talk about that tomorrow. We'll talk about that tomorrow. My mom just texted me, basketball is dumb. Thank you, Tom. <laughs> Facts. So am, so am I. Oh, you know what? You know what I'm gonna wake up to tomorrow since this is a nine o'clock Eastern game? Replay highlights of no, Caleb Warner airballer. I'm gonna get a text from my dad, the bulldozer. Oh, Bill. My favorite text that I get from him anytime one of our teams lose. Yep. What happened? Yep. What happened to the And Bears? you gotta explain, you gotta look him in the eye and explain it. And I'm like, I read the box score. That's how you used to do it back. At, like, don't come to me with this. I wish that was Scott Drew. Scott, what happened? Just read the box score. <laughs> they scored more points than we did. I don't know what you want from me. Comes off the rim. You grab it. Resign. <laughs> Drake Toll, Cameron Stewart, Locked On Baylor. Thank you for making it your first listen every single day. We've been doing good numbers recently. Thank you guys for that. Love you guys. This Love the Baylor been. people. 
Uh, always three. will be. Locked. On. Taylor. 